Grade 8 math number 11.3D. Now we're going to talk about similar triangles and slope. So from the last few videos, we now know that similar triangles have corresponding angles that are congruent. They also have corresponding sides that are proportional. And we can see the proportions as a rise and run for a slope of a line. And when we use the x and y coordinates with the slope formula, you remember this from the beginning of the school year, m is the slope, and it equals the second y-coordinate, take away the first y-coordinate, and over, as like a fraction, the second x-coordinate, take away the first x-coordinate, all right? And we see the slope, the rise and the run, both match the proportions of the triangles. So let me show you this picture. It says our rise over our run is a 2 over a 4, and that's for this little one right here, okay? That's for this little triangle. He's kind of nestled in the vertex of this bigger triangle. See that? So we've got line B, C right here. That's a 2, 2 units. That's our rise. And between A and B is 4 units. That's our run. So B, C, the green one right here, over A, B, this one, like a fraction, is the rise over the run. And D, E, this line right here, this line segment, is an 8 over A, D, and we come all the way to this point because you don't come to B because the whole triangle starts here, doesn't it? So we would ignore that little line right here, wouldn't we? Because that's the big triangle all the way to A. So AD is a total of 16. See that? So we put the 8 over the 16. That's our rise and our run. See that? 2 over 4 and 8 over 16. See? Now, to use the slope formula which a lot of you already know, but I'm just going to go over it really quick. We take the x and y coordinates for A, point A, and that's right here, isn't it? So on the x, it's a 5, and on the y, it's a 4. See that? For the x, it's a 5, and the y, it's a 4. We take point C. Point C is right here. That's a 9 for the x and a 6 for the y. 9 for the x and a 6 for the y. So here's the y coordinates and here's the x coordinates. This is y2 and that's y1. This is x2 and that's x1. So we're going to subtract. We're going to have y2, the 6, take away y1, the 4. 6 take away 2, 4 is 2. Then we got 9 take away 5. See how you start down here and you go up? 9 take away 5 is a 4. So look, we got 2 over 4 just like this was. That's BC over AB, just like we did here. It's BC over AB, see? We can do it for AE also. That would be A and E, see? A is at 5 and 4, so we write that down. The X is 5, the Y is 4, and E, the X is 21, and the Y is 12. The X is 21, right here, and the Y is is 12. See that? So now we're going to have 12 take away 4, that's an 8, and 21 take away 5, that's a 16. That gives us 8 over 16, just like it did. So DE over AD is 8 over 16, 8 over 16. See? See how we did that? All right, so I also want to show you this. This is using similar triangles to explain slope. So if we draw a sloped line L, Okay, so that's going to be this one right here. See? It's coming all the way down this way. And we label four points A, B, C, D anywhere on the line. So I went A, B, C, D. All right? So, so far we've just got this line with the four points on it. All right? Then we show if the slope between A and B is just like the slope between C and D. So the expression for the slope between A and B would be B, E over A, E. So let's look at that. It would be BE over AE. That's the rise and that's the run, okay? And for C and D, it would be DF over CF. DF over CF, the rise over the run, see? Now, we've got a set of parallel lines here that I darkened. And I didn't have to, but I wanted to make it easy for you to see. So because points A and E are on this line, this can be named line AE. See? This is line AE. And because C and F are on this line, they're points on this line, 
we can call this line line CF. See? And they make parallel lines. See that? So line AE and line CF are parallel lines with L as a transversal. See how it came down like that? So these are interior angles, these are exterior angles. See that? So angle BAE, BAE, so that would be this little angle right here, and angle DCF, that's this little angle here, these two angles right here for the pink and blue triangle, they're corresponding angles which makes them congruent. Okay? BEA, that's B E A, so that's this right angle right here, and DFC, that's this right angle right there, they're right angles and they're congruent. And by the angle angle similarity that we talked about a couple videos ago, that means triangle ABE and CDF are similar triangles. So that means this little pink one and this blue one are similar because they're in proportion and they have angles. They have two angles that match. See? The length of the corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So we know if BE is a two unit and DF is four units and AE is four units and CF is eight units, two fourths is equal to four eighths, isn't it? They're both half. And we can write the proportion so the ratios compare parts of the same triangle. We can say Instead of saying, like, this one was BE over DF, so that's BE over DF, so we took both rise and wrote them as a fraction, and then we took both runs and wrote them as a fraction, that's what we did up here. We can also take the same triangle and do it. So BE over AE, BE over AE is equal to DF over CF, see? Two-fourths is equal to four-eighths. And this proportion shows the ratios are equal, so the slope of line L is constant. And even if we made and labeled other points on line L, we could put several other points on there and do the same thing. The slope would be the same because it's constant. It's a constant slope. All right? Does that make sense? I know that was a lot to take in. We're going to move on to 11.4a, and we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So I hope I'll see you there, and I hope everything's going well for you, and have a good day. Bye.